So do you go cheap or do you buy once, cry once? Hi everyone, it's the Four Gun Guy. And I'm starting a new kind of series here where we're going to start talking about does the less expensive, I don't want to use the word cheap, does the less expensive tool or equipment, piece of equipment, do as well as the more expensive tool or equipment? So today we're going to be talking about sizing dies. Uh, we're going to compare two different sizing dies and we're going to see if one that costs twice as much money or actually more than twice as much as the other one really does make a difference. What I want to talk about is the two dies, what you get for the price. I want to look at what makes them different because there is uh, a couple things that make these two dies different. Then I want to look at some reloaded rounds and look at some concentricity or run out on those reloaded rounds. So I'm going to do seven with the Widden. I'm going to do seven with the short action custom, and we're going to compare those things. Then we're going to take it to the range and sneak peek. We're going to look at some, some shots that we put at paper at a hundred yards. So if you're ready to go, let's get started. Since I switched to the 6mm BRA round, uh, I changed my dies. Uh, so I went with the Widden Gunworks resizing die, and I really, really uh, liked it. Uh, it's given me good results, and uh, I've, been, I've been happy with it. For my 6.5 Creedmoor, I was using the Redding dies, and to me, those also did a really good job. I mean, my 6.5 Creedmoor loads, I was getting SDs in the threes and fours, ES is below 10, and my run out was, uh, was pretty good. I think those were anywhere from one to four thousandths. So that range is, is not a bad range for run out. And if you wanna hear about run out, I just did a video on that, you can click on that. But we're going to compare a bunch of that stuff today uh, with two dies. So I'm going to use my wooden die. And then we're going to look at the new die that I got. Because, uh, again, my buddy Jeff makes me spend money. And he was telling me about the short action customs uh, equipment or tools. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to give that a shot. It was on sale. It's around Christmas right now. So I did get this at a bit of a discount, but it's still a lot of money for a little piece of metal. So we're going to see how it stacks up. So let's go ahead and get to the two dies and what the differences between those two are. Let's talk price difference first. So with the uh, Widden resizing die, and these are both full length sizing dies, by the way. So with the Widden sizing die, your cost is about $120 for the die and $27 for the bushing. So your total cost for this one die is $147, right? So let's call it $150. Uh, the short action custom, this die is regularly $360. Uh, I did get it on sale for the holidays at $325. So it's still over twice as much uh, as the Widden, and if you pay the full 360, you're, you know, upwards of two and a half times. Now, this one does include, does include a bushing though. So when you order this die, it will include a bushing. Uh, if you want to start to get into mandrilling with both these dies, you're going to get into more money. So the Widden die I can add a different sized uh, uh, expansion ball. It's not really a mandrel. It's the, the expander ball that goes, goes in here uh, in the column, right? Usually the decapping column. Uh, but you can order that $17 or $20 or something like that. Short action custom. Uh, yeah, you can put a mandrel in here, which is what I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but I had to order, which I just don't understand. I had to order a new, uh, bushing, whatever this thing is called here. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a bushing that goes on the stem that then you can add the 
mandrel too, and the mandrel is $50. So by the time I'm all done with this short action custom uh, die, where I can both size and mandrel and expand the neck at the same time, I'm going to be into this thing for about $400. Yeah. And this is my own money. No one gives me this stuff. So uh, I'll be into this for about 400 bucks. So hopefully it'll do some good. Okay. Now let's get into the differences between these two from a engineering perspective. So according to Short Action Customs, their sizing die is uh, tapered from the full length perspective. And what that means is at the base of the die, it's a little larger than at the, at the shoulder of the die. And if you read their website, what they're saying is this helps with uh, case extraction after firing. So uh, it is still uh, engineered at SAMI spec. So this is for a SAMI spec chambered rifle. The interesting thing is for the six millimeter BRA, there are no SAMI specs yet. So uh, it's interesting to see how all these companies, I guess they've all decided on what the specs should be. And then Sammy will come up with it. Uh, the Widen die, my understanding is that it is a more of a straight, there is no taper to the case. Uh, it's just a straight die. So that's one aspect of it. I think the, the biggest difference that you will see when you get these things and the thing that really impresses me with the short action custom is the actual bushing that you use inside these dies. So let me do the focus on the camera and come in close so I can show you what these bushings look like. Okay, this is the wooden bushing. And you can see it, it's, it's pretty much a standard bushing, right? Uh, as far as I have read, it doesn't matter whether you have the numbers in or out. Some people will say out, some people say in, it gets confusing. The interesting, the other interesting thing about this bushing is that the stamping on it is raised a bit. Now I should have taken a stone to this and, and kind of, kind of polished it a little bit. So those weren't so raised, but this is what the wooden bushing looks like. This is the short action custom bushing, and you can already see a huge difference, right? You can see that they've, they've actually built the neck, or not the neck, the shoulder into this bushing. I really, really like that. Uh, and we're gonna see if this actually carries through to better concentricity. On the top of the bushing where they have their stamping, when you feel this, it is smooth as silk. So this all goes down to guys, what I kind of talk about with other things. You can see the difference in the fit and finish and workmanship between these two. They're both probably really good products, but I can tell you that the fit and finish of this short action custom bushing is unbelievable. This thing is smooth as silk, which to me would indicate that it's going to be smoother on my case uh, and on that neck. So. Let's now get back to a concentricity comparison and see how things turned out on our actual brass. I've got seven cases that I did with my new short action custom full length sizing die. I've got actually hundreds of cases that I've done with my uh, wooden resizing die. And let's just, I've got seven of each here these seven with the wooden, I literally took, took randomly out of 150 cases. Let's take the measurements on four cases. Okay. So let's do the wooden, wooden first. So I'll take this one. I'll put it on here. Now I'm doing the bullet tension. You see that I've got this, this gauge on the bullet here, right? So you can see where I've started. It's about 20, six right there. And now I'm going to rotate this case. There's two, uh, one, two, three, four. That looks to be about four, four and a half, five, uh, 
thousandths of run out on that one. Let's do another one. This is again from the Widen. One, two, three, four, five, yep, about five. So again, not great, but let's do another one here. One. That's about five as well, okay? So there's three. We'll do one more just to do it. Yep, that's about five thousandths, okay? So five thousandths on the Widen. Now let's look at our uh, short action custom. This is the bullet. So you see we're starting at about 28, about 28 and a half. We're going to 29 and a half, 27 and a half. So we're at about two thousandths there. Uh, let's take another random one here. Out of that batch, we're at 29 about, uh, about a thousandth and a half. So about a thousandth and a half there. Take another one here. 29. That is about a thousandth. <laughs> so, so let's see here. Yep, about a thousandth run out. And in our last case, we'll look at that. And... We're at 29, and again, about a thousandth of run out. So, you know, this is, this is showing you that the, the difference between two full length sizing dies, and everything remains the same, guys, everything. I used the same seating die. They were all annealed at the same time. Everything remained the same. Uh, you can see that the one sizing die gave us better a run out results than another sizing die. So uh, I'm not going to redo this and do the do the neck because I I can promise you it's going to come out to be the exact same thing, the exact differences uh, in the neck. And I'm going to use the wooden die on the right target there. So shot number one, wooden die. Okay. If you can see that, that's a bullseye. I'm at 27.74. Shot number two wouldn't die. Right there. Now, I know I'm not going out to distance, and part of that reason is because, as you can see right here, it's foggy, very foggy. But... That's not a bad little group, is it, guys? And this is going to be the fourth shot with the wooden die. Okay. And the first, so this is a string 63. Uh, the average velocity is 2785 with an SD of 7.8. I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to do all seven. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is so we can get a better population on the SD and ES. That might have been rushed by me. That's shot five. This is shot six. And this is shot seven. Okay, not a bad little group for a seven shot group. Let's go to the short action custom now. Short action custom. Let's up a little more. So short action custom. Shot one. Okay. This thing's driving tax, isn't it? Short action custom. Shot two. Short action custom shot. Let me get it out of there. What's the deal with that? Shot three. Okay. 
It had a little heavy bolt lift on it. That was interesting. Shot four. Shot five. Shot six. I'm telling you, this bolt, uh, the bolt lift on these is a little, is a little excessive. Uh, I'm not feeling any primer, uh, any primer issues, but the, 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 the bolt lift on these is, is interesting. Shot seven. That one was okay. Okay, so seven, seven shots there. Okay, well I've got uh, I've got props all over the place here. So this is the this is the target with the shots on it, and let's look at that first. So let's look at the wooden target first. So the wooden target, not a bad group. Uh, I'd like it to be a little tighter. Uh, the group size is 0.536 MOA. Uh, it was seven shots again at 100 yards, and uh, you know that was a not a bad group right there. Let's go to the SAC, Short Action Customs. That group was 0.556 MOA. Uh, and uh, that was a pretty good group too. I think in the Short Action Customs group there, I had, I think five and six were the flyers. Uh, and then in the Widden, I had like three that were kind of up and left uh, of, the, of the main group. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, I, I don't know. I it to me these two look pretty similar. Uh, as I said, the short action custom is kind of tighter from a how many shots were outside the primary group. So, with that said, that's that. Now, let's look at the numbers. So the numbers here, and you know me, I like my Excel spreadsheets. So I went ahead and run this out on the wooden die. Now I did some, some things here. On the SDs, for the whole seven shot group, the SD was 6.65. Not bad, but not great. I'd love my SDs for my 6BRA to get down to what I had with my 6.5 Creedmoor. But if it's accurate, I'm not really gonna worry about those that much. So that was the SD overall. The SD for a five shot group, because if you look at the chart on both of these, you'll see that the, the ends, the first shot and the seventh shot of both groups were, were at extremes, right? Isn't that interesting that at the Widden, the first shot was at the lower end of the velocity and the last shot was at the higher end. With the short action custom, the first shot was at the higher end and the last shot was at the lower end. So I think this is a really weird uh, uh, result here, but so what I did is look, I went SD 6.65 on the Widden, but if I took those ends off, the SD was 4.17. Same with extreme spread. Look at what happens with the extreme spread of all seven shots at 21, but if I took those ends off, my extreme spread goes down to 11. So in between the ends was, were, were good, good results. The average velocity was 27.85. Uh, which is actually a little high for what I've been running, but not that much different. Uh, now let's go back to the short action custom. Again, remember the Widden had five thousandths of run out. The short action had one thousandth of run out. If you look at those results, the SD on the seven shot 6.21, so a little better than the Widden, not markedly so. The SD on the five shot center group there was 4.21. Uh, again, that's worse than the Widden in the five shot group. If you look at the ESs, literally almost the same. On the seven shot group, it was 19. On the five shot group, it was 11, which is the same as the Widden. 
and then the average velocity 2778. So those are the numbers. Uh, I would really like to do this again and then go out to say 500 yards and if I could really get some accurate results with like a, a, a shot video or something like that, I'd like to take these out to 800 yards. I may do that in the future when it's not foggy at the range. Uh, and I have more time to work up more loads, uh, uh, two more groups of, of loads. But with all that said, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get to final thoughts. Well, final thoughts here is interesting, isn't it? So we started off with two dies. One is more than two times the expense of the other one. Uh, the short action custom is really, really well built, as is the Widden. Not taking anything away from it, but I think the fit and finish on the short action custom is just a tad bit better. Then we loaded seven rounds, sent them down range, took the numbers off of those, and we came up with results that were almost identical. identical. So, with that being said, I would like to go further out just to validate that at distance this might make a difference, but at the end of the day, guys, these numbers here don't really lie, do they? I mean, we're taking the muzzle velocity, the SDs, the ESs. Now, from what I've read, concentricity does really have an effect when you're reaching out more past 800 yards. I can totally see and understand that. <clears throat> but uh, I've also read that concentricity doesn't really matter that much or affect. Let me, let me say that. Let me rephrase that. Concentricity doesn't really affect the results past 800 yards one, unless you get above 10 thousandths in concentricity or in run out. So we are well below that with both of these. I will tell you the short action custom, the results of those shocked me. They were very consistent, as they were with the Widden. Remember, the Widden was consistently five thousandths off uh, with run out. The short action custom was consistent, consistently a thousandth of run out. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to do an entire batch with the short action custom, and I'm gonna measure the concentricity on every one of those cases, and I'm just gonna see how that turns out. Uh, I'll add those comments or add those results to the comments of this video or in the description when I do do that. But anyway, I'll let you make your own uh, determination. Uh, in my opinion, not sure that it's worth the money to spend two and a half times more money on a, uh, on this piece of equipment when the piece of equipment that I had before gave me some favorable results. So, Thanks again for watching everyone. I appreciate the comments, likes, uh, subscriptions, everything about it. Uh, and until next time, shoot straight.